Kid Icarus, a classic series by Nintendo, beginning on the NES, the series lay dormant for 21 years until its recent revival on the 3DS. Although there are only a couple of games in the series, they're all fantastic. Let's take a look. The first game in the series, Kid Icarus, was developed and released on the NES by Nintendo in 1987. This is an action platforming game with both vertical and horizontal scrolling levels. The story follows the adventure of Pit as he journeys throughout Angelland to rescue Palutina from the evil power of Medusa. The levels take you from the depths of the underworld, across the overworld, up through Sky World, and eventually to the palace in the sky. Your primary weapon is a bow, which you use to defeat a wide variety of enemies and monsters. Some notable enemies include Mono-Eye, Specknose, Reaper, and Eggplant Wizards. As you defeat monsters, you collect hearts and gain experience points. The hearts are used in stores in the black market to purchase items for health and weapon upgrades. You can also win items in the treasure chambers throughout the land. If you survive battle in the Sacred Training Chamber, you can attain three special weapon power-ups including Flaming Arrows, the Sacred Bow, and a Protective Crystal. The game incorporates some role-playing elements as the experience points you gain will increase your life bar and attack power. At the end of each section is a Fortress Labyrinth where you must find your way to the Boss Chamber. You can gather mallets throughout each level and use them in the Fortress to unlock captured Centurions. These flying soldiers then aid you in your fight against the boss. Once the gatekeeper is defeated, you recover one of the sacred treasures. When all three sacred treasures are obtained, the seal is broken and pick and take flight in the Sky Palace. The final level is a unique section of the game and plays as a side-scrolling shooter. This area is very fun and one of my favorite parts of the game. After an epic battle with Medusa, you were able to rescue Palutina and restore order to Angel Land. Like many early games on the NES, a password system is available to allow you to return to a previously started game. This is helpful as the game can be very difficult, especially in some of the vertical scrolling levels with challenging jumps and platforms of ice. With that said, the controls are tight and responsive. With some practice and patience, the game can offer a fun and rewarding experience. Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters was developed by Nintendo and released on the Game Boy in 1991. A sequel to the NES title, this is another action platforming game following the adventures of Pit. You again must journey through each area of Angel Land to gain strength and obtain the three sacred treasures. Pit can then prove himself worthy to defend the land from the invasion of Orcos. The gameplay and level design is heavily influenced by the NES predecessor. You will encounter many familiar enemies as you fight your way through each level, gaining hearts and experience points. When enough enemies are defeated, you are able to level up your attack power and endurance. Many of the same rooms are present, with the addition of information rooms that offer tips and advice. The viewable play screen is zoomed in, making the levels feel larger, and a map screen is available through the pause menu. Where the rooms filled the entire screen on the NES, you must now walk across each room to fully view the area. The levels now scroll freely in four directions, allowing you to explore previously visited environments. At the end of each stage, a save option is available, allowing you to easily return to a previously started game. 
While most of the same items are attainable, the mallet can now break blocks and reveal hidden doors. The difficulty of this game is much easier than that of the prequel. The levels are shorter, and the platforming segments are much more forgiving. You will no longer die from a fall in the vertical levels, and a floating mechanic allows you to slowly descend from a jump. The health items are also much more plentiful as they can be found in blocks or dropped by monsters. The game improves upon many of the elements introduced in the original and is a great installment in the series. the Game Boy game, there was no word from the series for many years. In 2008, in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Pit became a playable character, bringing some new life to the series. The addition of Pit as a character was well received, and interest in the series grew, leading up to its recent release of Kid Icarus Uprising on the 3DS in 2012. The story takes place 25 years after the events of Kid Icarus on the NES and is much more immersive than the previous titles. Although several new mechanics and levels are introduced, the game is very faithful to the Kid Icarus series and brings back many familiar characters and enemies. With the help of Palutena, Pit is given the power of flight to travel the skies and fight the underworld army under Medusa's control. Along your journey you will encounter many old foes including Eggplant Wizards, Twin Bellows, and Hugh Draw. A new character, Dark Pit, is introduced after destroying the Mirror of Truth in Pandora's Labyrinth. The game is controlled with the Circle Pad and Stylus, and also supports use of the Circle Pad Pro. Each of the game's stages are split up into air and ground sections. Air sections are on-rail shooting segments where you shoot flying enemies and dodge incoming attacks. On the ground, you have much more control over Pit as you traverse through each level. You are able to travel on grind rails and ride in a variety of different vehicles. As the game progresses, Pit is able to use several different types of weapons including bows, claws, blades, and stabs, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. By collecting hearts from defeated enemies, you can place bets to increase the intensity of a chapter and increase the difficulty. Along with the game's single-player story mode, a multiplayer mode is available for up to six players. You can compete in team deathmatches or free-for-alls using standard characters and items you obtain through the game. With the enhanced graphics and depth of story and gameplay, this game is a welcome revival for the series. All of these games are very good, so it's hard to pick a favorite, but here are my power picks. Prior to making this video, I had never tried Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters before, but really enjoyed it. If you can find this game for a decent price, I would definitely check it out. Something a little more recent and more easily accessible, Kid Icarus Uprising on the 3DS is a great game. It adds a lot to the series with a lot of great throwbacks and definitely worth checking out for any fan of the series. Let me know, have you tried any of these games before? Does this video make you want to pick one up and check it out? If you're familiar with the series, what are some of your favorites? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.